Thank everybody. First, let me welcome you uh, here. It's been it's a great honor to uh, welcome such a distinguished and august delegation. And uh, it also uh, gives us uh, the great pleasure and privilege uh, to uh, welcoming uh, both uh, Sanya and Gamal Kruma, who uh, certainly in my youth, uh, President Kruma was uh, an inspiration for all of Africa, having uh, been the, the, the uh, first to bring uh, uh, the end to colonialism in, uh, in uh, uh, certainly uh, West Africa and other parts of Africa, and uh, with whom uh, Egypt forged such a very strong bond that has uh, really belied the tendency of some to constantly try to split the African continent and uh, say that uh, the Africa starts only south of the Sahara and that North Africa is uh, not part of Africa. I think that is a denial of the uh, joint history, of the colonialism we fought against, uh, that, uh, uh, the, the support that uh, President Nkrumah and Ghana and, uh, gave to Algeria in its uh, battle for independence. These are things that we cannot forget. And, uh, all of us then to see uh, how uh, our presidents together helped found the Nomalai movement, helped found the, the OAU, helped found so many of uh, the institutions and movements that were more than political expressions. They were a, a manifestation of uh, African aspirations. They were a, a, a statement about the dignity of human beings. They were a rejection of uh, racism in Western Germany. And they were a, a, a reaffirmation of a common humanity and uh, the right of all people to live in dignity and in peace and prosperity. Uh, these uh, values, uh, I think, uh, they lived and uh, they launched. More recently, of course, uh, all our countries have gone through trials and tribulations. But again, uh, Ghana has led the way in many ways, both in terms of economic reform and political reform, has set the, the, uh, the standard for how uh, uh, transitions can be managed both economically and uh, politically. And therefore, Ghana remains a, a great inspiration to all of Africa. In Egypt, we value very much the strong bonds that we have with uh, Africa and uh, the rest of Africa, and uh, are eager to do our part in helping to strengthen uh, these bonds uh, for the benefit of the entire continent. It is sad that uh, in many ways the continent is lagging in most uh, socioeconomic indicators. And uh, when people will tell me, I've been in many international conferences, and I've, as you know, I've devoted a large part of my life to uh, working on developmental problems in Africa. And they say to me, are you optimistic about that? I say, of course I'm optimistic about Africa. I am very optimistic. Oh, but you know, there are all these problems. I said, let me remind you. You have short memories. Go back and read the literature of the 1960s. In the 1960s, everybody was writing about how Asia was going to be a disaster. Uh, Gunnar Mirdal wrote Asian drama. And uh, Paul Ehrlich wrote uh, 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 Famine 1975, and uh, so on and so forth. And everybody said, oh, Africa is where the future lies. Asia is going to be one disaster after the other. Today, we're talking about the Asian model, and what we can learn from Asia, what we have seen Asia do, and so on and so forth. 
and uh, you have now, uh, you Western scholars are now down on Africa. Well, you were down on Asia before. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's wrong. And Asia, and Asia showed you that you are wrong, and I think Africa will show you that you are equally wrong. <laughs> So welcome to Alexandria, your Alexandria, welcome to the library, your library, and it is uh, very much uh, our spirit that this should be uh, very strongly associated with that. I've been also proud that a number of really African uh, initiatives have taken place here, including the, uh, the Mubrahim uh, Foundation Prize. So welcome. very moved by the warmth of the welcome that has been extended to us. We of the Millennium Excellence Awards program are here at the behest of our life patron. His Majesty Otu for the Asante Himi. He is the king of Ashanti. But we are not coming from the Ashanti kingdom. We are coming from Ghana. We are coming from Africa. In search of a mind, an African mind, a new African spirit. an endowed African patriot who as a supreme intellectual equal to any in the world is blazing a trail of superb leadership in the field of science, in the field of development, and in the field of a return of confidence, self-confidence to Africa. This is where we are coming from, and this is our destination. It is therefore a gift of God that we've been blessed enough to see you alive, active, and available unto us and unto our desires and wishes. My sister, Honorable Sami Nkuma, my sister, Governor, Madame Sapnamuki, and Mr. Ashim Martin to your left, the founder of the foundation, we come filled with a sense of history, proud history, that the roots of world civilization acknowledged in Egypt today has found the revival of a mandate to pursue that excellence in everything. In a man going by the name of Ishmael Seregaldi, a man who has taken control of the life, mission, fortunes, and destiny of a major, a most major center of learning in Africa. Thanks to the vision and generosity of the president of Egypt, His Excellency, President Hosni Mubarak, who saw to the recreation of the ancient Alexandria Library, having successfully managed to mobilize the support 
of well wishes of other major institutions around the world, which is a testimony to the fact of how much the world has benefited from the civilization that sprouted from Egypt. We come with a full knowledge of who we are as an African people. And we come, therefore, to invite the world to focus their attention on the magnificent activity, intellectual activity, of one of the sons of Africa. Very often, it is given to human nature to wait till when a man is lying down at the end of the road for us to come and be drawn, sing hymns, and sing hallelujah choruses. But we think that give unto Caesar what is Caesar's. So we think that in order, in an Africa that today is in need of leadership, real leadership, we should make it a point to identify those who are helping to boost Africa into her correct future by acknowledging the excellence they show in their work so that even others will be inspired Tell a man, tell a woman who or what he or she is so that they will be more inspired to sacrifice, to labor in the highest interest of mankind, beginning with the African people. Ishmael Saragelli, in the world of ideas, in the world of concepts, and in the world of development, this name has been a cornerstone of reference for excellence. And since the world sometimes can be too busy to take note of those who feed her milk, of those who transfer the blessings of God to her world, we think this is a time that should not be lost to tell the world, halt, Take a look and offer a salute to one of us who, normal and human like us, is indeed, in spite of everything, giving of his best, delivering to the highest level of excellence. Dr. Sarah Gelby, you are sitting by a gentleman who is not only saying what he's saying because he knows some words. The gentleman sitting by you has seen you in action. I was privileged to be invited by the Mo Ibrahim Foundation to attend the first ceremony here. And I saw you and I heard you. So when the Millennium Excellence Awards Foundation decided to honor you in the name of Africa, Salim Ahmed Salim was there, Kofi Annan was there. I was seated next to my aunt, Nadim Godima. Oh yes, we in 1991 invited her to Ghana, the Pan-African Writers Association. I was seated with her. And we listened to your submission. And of course we observed how the whole distinguished gathering Listen attentively to your words. This library is a spiritual testament to the values that Africa places on that which is at the core of human civilization, knowledge and education. We know how much the world, every hour, 
is stretching out to grab you, to grab your attention, to access your experience and your leadership expertise. Every other day you are doing something, either here or somewhere or somewhere in the world. So, we can only ask to know who are the two people chosen by God to give birth to this young man. You are an ambassador to your parents. You are an honor to your family. You are a credit to Africa and a source of honor to mankind. We on the 4th of December are organizing the third edition of the Millennium Excellence Award. This third edition is special. There shall be two segments. The first one will be in the morning at the Accra International Conference Center where 19 nominees would have been put up by the population of Ghana. 19 nominees who will be honored for their work of excellence in various activities. In the evening, we shall go to the banquet hall of the State House and well figures would be invited to stand up before the world and receive the acknowledgement of the people of Africa as those who, through their activities, have impacted positively on the fortunes and destiny of Africa. An Africa that indeed, as Dr. has said, is the continent that is yet to rise is a continent mandated by God to show the world the way forward. This statement to the world will be made at the center of the earth, which is located in Ghana. That is the moral prerogative of a country so positioned by God. And when we think of Alexander, we think of President Gamal Nasser. We come to the modern times of Africa's Egypt. We don't have to think. We have to see, observe, acknowledge the grace of God in a being that is totally committed to the promotion of enlightenment for our African people. Bibliotheca Alexandrina, the word Bibliotheca is the same in the Russian language. I studied Russian literature in Moscow for six years. So when the name sounds, I know what this means. This library has become a center for the reinvigoration of the African spirit, of the African mind. It has created a pedestal for the showcasing of African genius, for the African people to see and to regain confidence in themselves that it was here that it all started. It is from here that all will continue. The Millennium Excellence Award, which has a special category, which is Lifetime African Prize, Lifetime Achievement. comprises of the following. A plaque, which has a citation, a bronze 
portrait of the awardee. The prize itself and 100,000 US dollars. This happens on the day of event. On the following day, which will be a Saturday, there is a special deba in Kumasi, where the home and the palace of the life patron is. And there will be a special grand deba in honor of those who are to be honored and also the heads of states who will come from around Africa and the world to do honor to these illustrious sons of the world. The honorees at the world level, like I said, are coming not only from Africa, but from all parts of the world. And this is what has sent us on this mission. We, as a matter of fact, have to send a message. But according to African tradition, we cannot sit there and send a message. We therefore <laughs> have come in a special delegation to knock on your door. We know how busy you are, so we pitied you. Otherwise, we should have knocked on your door at 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> but we have understanding for our <laughs> elders who are being handled by the whole world today, here, tomorrow, there. My God. This is what has brought us here, your honor. And on behalf of the life patron, on behalf of the people of Africa, we praise you, we salute you, we congratulate you. in a situation where I'm speechless. <laughs> <laughs> but really, but the presence of, of, of such eloquence and such kindness and so many kind words, I really have very little to say. I'm overwhelmed and uh, I'm deeply, deeply touched and uh, uh, overcome by an enormous sense of gratitude and of thanks by admiration for the initiative and uh, for the role that the life patron is playing, that you in Ghana are playing, in which I can only thank and commend uh, and say that, of course, I am very, very profoundly moved and uh, that I uh, hope that, indeed, uh, I can live up to such kind words as you have expressed. I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And at moments like these, it is from the heart that one speaks. Uh, there is uh, uh, any other formulations would be trite and, uh, and uh, ineffective. So uh, uh, accept these inarticulate words of thanks <laughs> as uh, as a, a true expression of gratitude because they come from the heart. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. When, according to African tradition, you visit the chief, you don't go with empty hands. You go with two bottles of schnapps. <laughs> You go with two bottles of snaps. And on this occasion, we have brought the snaps. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Two bottles of intellectual snaps. <laughs> yes, that's <good>. intellectual snaps. <laughs> that that is yes, yes. two volumes of my poetry. Ah, thank you. And um, uh, they are Freedom Symphony, Selected and New Love Poems, Mandela de Spear, and other poems. Yes. And I have the honor of presenting them on behalf of our delegation mm -hmm. and on behalf of the Pan-African Writers Association to the one and only Dr. Ishmael Seragel.
Doctor, there is one thing I must say. Ideas do not fall from the sky. They are generated by the human heart, the human mind. We are privileged to be members of the Board of Governors of the Millennium Excellence Award. This has come about because of the unique vision and spirit of determination and enterprise of a young man called Ashim Morton, here he is, co-founder. Um, again, I thank you for taking the time to meet with us this morning. Um, after Professor Atukwe Okain has spoken, and good recipient, Dr. Ismail Sarageldo. I don't think I have much more to say, but to say thank you for the time that you've taken out, and uh, that we're looking forward to seeing you in Ghana. I think it's going to be a day that the entire world will be very proud of. Um, let me take this opportunity again to thank you for meeting with us. I'll ask Honorable Sami Nkuma to say a few words before I conclude. So Honorable Sami. On behalf of our life patron, mm -hmm. the King of the Ashanti, Osei Tutu II, the Asantehini, on behalf of our chairman, the founder of the Millennium Excellence Awards, and my colleague, many of whom are not here, we are 11 in all. On beh behalf of everyone involved in this precious project, I want to thank you first, all of you, for receiving us so warmly, for giving us time and attention. I must say I am overwhelmed too, and I think I can honestly say these words on behalf of everyone. The two hours we've spent at the Bibliotheca has really inspired all of us here. For us, taking this step goes beyond the call of duty. We came here principally to invite you to accept this award. These awards are intended, amongst other things, to inspire our young people, to inspire them to look towards our models of excellence, to inspire them to give, to inspire them to serve, to inspire them to sacrifice. But we're, here we are, totally carried away with the beauty and richness of this place, that we are sitting planning into the future. We are sitting thinking that we've been given a wonderful gift and we must build on it. For many of us, our political independence in Africa is just the first step. In fact, the leaders of our independence told us that we are gaining political independence only as a means to achieve socio-economic and cultural emancipation. This great project is one of those steps, remarkable steps along the road to our cultural emancipation, the restoration of our dignity, the reversal of the aftermath, the consequences of slavery and colonialism. We have been humbled by this morning's experience. And the fact that is here, we are here at the cradle of civilization, as we call it. 
the fact that we are here coming from West Africa, from Black Africa, as we like to call it. So further links with the north of our continent. We hope that we can strengthen those bonds and we would dearly love to see you in Ghana this year to demonstrate to our people that our deep-seated links, the links between the north and the south of our continent are still alive and kicking. For many of us, for me personally, and I can think I can speak for my dear brother, who I'm so happy to see. This is another <laughs> bonus that <laughs> you've given me the opportunity to see him. Yes, yes. I think I can honestly say that for many of us, personally, politically, and in every respect, we don't feel any difference between the north of the continent and the south. We know that we have this rich, diverse, multicultural continent, and we are determined to close those barriers, those gaps, not to show off, not to flex our muscles, but to become effective partners in the world today. A strong Africa is a strong Europe, is a strong North America. We know that. And we continue with our endeavors to make sure that those gaps are closed further and further. I can honestly say in one breath for all of us, long live a multicultural, multilingual, multireligious, diverse, strong, united Africa. Thank you. legacy that the world owes to Africa that we need to remind them. Not just that, as I say to people who talk about the condition of Africa today, and I said, Africa is where humans first learned to walk and stand up erect. And Africa is going to get off her knees and show the world, lead the torch. And we have already started in some ways. We have started with leaders like Nelson Mandela, with other leaders who show the way in how reconciliation can be encouraged, how people can in fact lead to this multicultural, diverse uh, sort of, uh, of uh, institution uh, uh, that the world is seeking. At a time when they're all troubled by how to deal with immigration, etc., etc., we remind them maybe, maybe African wisdom is where we should come again. Maybe here you will find the source of wisdom. Because if you have a lot of knowledge, that's one thing. But wisdom is another. And here we really have a lot to do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, uh, I have something, I have something, Excellency, that I must deliver to the library. In 1986, I think, in preparation for the creation of the Pan-African Writers Association, we went to African countries to visit African Writers Associations and meet with heads of state to brief them on the project of the creation. From Algeria, I went to, to Tunis, then, uh, then uh, Libya, then I came to Egypt. <coughs> the Ghana ambassador led me to greet Dr. Boutros Boutros Ghali at the foreign ministry. He was then Minister of State for Foreign Affairs before he became the United Nations. We went to visit the Minister of Culture, Farouk Hosni. He said, so, uh, Mr. Okai, so when are you going back? And I said, oh, in two days' time. He said, what? A great African point like you come here, you are going to this time, we are going to detain you. And we are going to organize a literary evening for you at Akhenaten Gallery. It was organized. After reading for one hour, I said, 
I want to outdoor a poem that I've created here in Egypt. And I perform the poem. The poem, uh, this was in February. In March, from Egypt, I went to Ethiopia and met the Secretary General of the OAU. And he said, in March, there is going to be a conference of African Ministers of Culture in Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso. And we will invite you to come and brief the ministers. I went and I briefed the ministers. And they said they would support the creation of the association. And I ended my statement by reading that poem created in Egypt with the history to them. When I sat down, there was a delegation, about six people coming to where I was seated. Who was it? Farouk Hoxney and the Egyptian delegation. <laughs> when Samir's mama was being buried in Accra at the funeral, I read that poem created in Egypt and added her name to those to whom the poem is dedicated. So since this is a library and I belong to the Writers Association of Africa, I will deliver the poem to you. Yes. yes. This is where you should come again. And maybe here you will find the source of wisdom. Because if you have a lot of knowledge, that's one thing. But wisdom is another. And here we really have lots of wisdom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, uh, I have something I have something, Excellency, that I must deliver to the library. In 1986, I think, in preparation for the creation of the Pan-African Writers Association, we went to African countries to visit African Writers Associations and meet the Secretary of State to brief them on the project of the creation. From Algeria, I went to, to, to Tunis, then uh, then uh, Libya, then I came to Egypt. <coughs> the Ghana ambassador led me to greet Dr. Boutros Boutros Ghali at the foreign ministry. He was then Minister of State for Foreign Affairs before he became the United Nations. We went to visit the Minister of Culture, Farouk Hosni. He said, so, uh, Ms. Okai, so when are you going back? And I said, oh, in two days' time. He said, what? A great African poet like you come here, you are going two days' time, we are going to detain you. And we are going to organize a literary evening for you at Akhenaten Gallery. It was organized. After reading for one hour, I said, I want to outdoor a poem that I've created here in Egypt. Perform the poem. The poem, uh, this was in February. In March, from Egypt, I went to Ethiopia and met the Secretary General of the OAU. And he said, In March, there is going to be a conference of African Ministers of Culture in Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso. And we will invite you to come and brief the ministers. I went and I briefed the ministers they said they would support the creation of the association. And I ended my statement by reading that poem created in Egypt with the history to them. When I sat down, there was a delegation, about six people coming to where I was seated. Who was it? Farouk Hoxney and the Egyptian delegation. <laughs> when Samir's mama was being buried in Accra at the funeral. I read that poem created in Egypt and added her name to those to whom the poem is dedicated. So since this is a library and I belong to the Writers Association of Africa, I will deliver the poem to you. Yes. yes. It is like a dream. I am in Egypt. From ancient Alexandria's Pompeii's pillar, from Gamal Nasser Abdel Cairo's tower,
together with thunder and all, I do not cower before the cold force of winds, blown with furious pharaonic power, as we press around like Samori and Babaku, to see in all, as Cairo, in glittering bits and somber pieces, sprawls around like a horizontalized anthill. Peering across the exposed heads of Eli cars, reeling skyscrapers, innocent huts, huts, and spaces, I look like a latter-day native Napoleon, Bonaparte, he after all did not hail from this part, and see enough of the patiently proud and eternally powerful pyramids. Take away the crowd, take away the crowd. Asaran solitude Sarara and the God gazing time teasing eternal trinity of the triple nipple of the pyramids upon the sun saluting Sphinx plateau at Giza. Pyramids perpetually perched in the prayerful meantime of elusive eternity upon the invisible steadfast architectural pebble of humanity's first and eternally anonymous Super Pythagoras. Out of histories and distances from silly mist, the pyramidal parabola conjures forth our table mountain in a fire necklace, bullet spitting, fire fractured south, where zealous Azania, like a provoked Shaka Zulu, is in wrath, says at the Cape of Good but useless hope. The water of life has been rendered poisonous and rough. Sanity's horizon is hanging on the rope. Towers her, sleepwalkers stagger and grope as if from dope. From the Cairo Tower, give me a jet asthma helicopter view of things. I am searching for our Rosetta Stone. We must find out for what and what we must atone. With Sheikh Antadiop and Brother Boutros Boutros Gali, we journey from ancient Songhai to medieval Mali. I see the fortress temple of Muhammad Ali. I see the lotus flower perfume, the anid whole day ever dawning centuries, in the Dalabai midnight alabaster limbs of the belly dancer Suher Zaki. <laughs> I see the Zimbabwe river. Thomas Sankara and the Victoria Falls and their sentinels, Jumo Cape, Rose Mariano, and Faru Kosi, drinking the sounds of the city of a thousand minarets that mine the minds of wells that should not be at rest. I see the life giving eye and the city of the dead, and who says they are dead? In the largest city on medieval earth, Cairo, I see the university mosque of Al Ajar, Hedor Karajar. Rock carrying ass, sled drawing ass, chisel and mattock, princely seducers of immortality. The majestic bar relief seek to give relief to the mortality maroon, like the sun in the galaxy. Air we breathe. We must break the code of the Rosetta Stone to decipher the hieroglyphics of our destiny. In this crusade, are we alone? Ancestors and Kuma and Nassar, we hear your voices sounding from afar. We see you on horses, you the spirit of our forces. The thunder today carried the clear voice print of Kwame and Jamal, the coded message activates the preemptive strike of Tutankhamun's jackal. The sunrise today bears the clear fingerprint of Akhenaten. Egypt is one. Africa is one. God is one. La illa illa. Upon the shifting forehead of Cairo's golden sands. I read the hieroglyphics of time, and my heart understands. In the meantime of eternity, 
discover the key that breaks the code of the oracle of our destiny. Something was translated and published in the Alaram. Oh, yeah. Right. We'd like to see a big applause. Begins with the path. We all remember that Kri Dukar of Kwame Nkrumah, Africa must unite now. We didn't. We didn't do it. But your message also is a message for the future. Time has passed, but we are still keeping the faith. And your message, your award of excellence, your coming to Alexandria, your words, your poem, is a, a sign that the future is still ours. Mm -hmm. And that together we will be able to realize the dream. I congratulate Dr. Saragdin for that extraordinary award. But I congratulate you, the founder, you, the president, and uh, the, having the, the, the name Nkrumah with us is also <laughs> an inspiration. <laughs> thank you very much for uh, being here, and thank you for letting me be here in that ceremony. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. I, uh, uh, we are in a library, so the exchange of books <laughs> is very appropriate. <laughs> this is, uh, I think we have, Andak, uh, we have some of these for everyone. But this is really uh, the building that you have seen has uh, elicited much admiration. It has won awards. So I had written this little book about a landmark building, the reflections on the architecture of the building. And there are pictures and there are plans of the building itself are all found here So on this book. Then this is all the plans of the building and so on. However, it is not the building, it is what happens in it yeah, that makes yeah, it important. Yeah. And so on the fifth anniversary of the building, which was in 2007, I wrote this little book to go with it, companionable, so this is a landmark building, but also much more than a building. There are many parts that you haven't seen. We have eight research institutes, we have uh, many other things that are still ongoing. The planetarium is almost ready for uh, reopening because we refurbished uh, everything and uh, it's the we receive about 1.3 million visitors a year and we hold about 700 events meaning um, conferences yes. uh, exhibitions etc every year so about two three a day and it's these young people who make it happen so the, that's why it is a building and much more than a building however this is the library, but we also are in Alexandria, yeah, a city of uh, dreams, a city of myth, a city that goes back a long way. And you visited, I believe, the, uh, the Our Collection. And so these are the engravings of the, of the Our Collection, including the first appearance of Alexandria in print in 1493 in Hartman Chagel's book, and some of these other, all the, these are the, the uh, the uh, lithographs that were there. And in this, you have a little bit of an explanation of what they, each one is. So as a souvenir of ancient Alexandria and the new library, we thought that the two would go together as a souvenir of your visit. <laughs> and we have a similar souvenir for everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, yes. won your type of award last event. Ah, oh well, yes, it's oh a, yes. It, what an honor to be yes. in his footsteps. And uh, this gentleman near you <laughs> is almost dying because he's an architect. Oh, really? So he <laughs> enjoys the building so very much. He enjoys the building a lot. Uh, I um, uh, I'm a man of very few words. Oh. And when I saw the library 
on the internet. I had blue sprinkles. Because they have designed a museum very similar to this many years back. And I showed it to, so I think we need to have some bilateral discussions and collaboration. You have a picture of that building? Yes, it's, it's, it's with the professor. So we can see how we can yeah, work exactly together. Yeah, exactly Mediterranean Center. We have, we have, a, we have a purpose. Really? So I think uh, in the future, yeah, we'll in the we'll near future, yeah, we'll I would we'll like to see some collaboration. Yeah. But we need to do something on Sunday. Hallelujah. Exactly. Correct. Excellent. Excellent. That I promise you we shall do together. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.